we praise you and we open our hearts and minds and by faith in you, by faith in the Holy Spirit, our teacher, we receive revelation from heaven, revelation of your love for us. Mm. And we praise you for it. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Bill Winston, praise, praise God, man. <laughs> um, yes. Whew. Let's start over again today because we got started yesterday and, the, <laughs> and, and it just kind of just well, exploded, didn't well, it? Well, that, that's what this love subject does. It does. It, it encompasses everything. It, it, is, it, is, it is not what God has. It is God. Yeah, and God, God doesn't have love. No. He is love. He is love, see. Now, let's just start here at Matthew chapter 22 again in verse 34. But when the Pharisees had heard he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. And one of them, then one of them, which was a lawyer, um, asked him a question, tempting him. This is key now. And saying, Master, which is a great commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. And this is the first and great commandment. The second is likened to it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So yesterday we kind of talked about having a, a love <clears throat> for God and having the love of God, for God to allow God to love us with covenant love, with unconditional love, because it's in our own minds we've been taught that we've got to live by our own abilities. Well, that's Babylon. Mm -hmm. And once mm -hmm. Babylon, you come out of that and get into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Now, the kingdom is a new order of living by faith. And so now we have to understand that this faith works by love, Galatians 5, 6. So it hangs, the law and prophets hang, hang on those commandments. Faith hangs on that law. On that love. On love. Like, like, like a, like what I said yesterday, like a curtain on a rod. Absolutely. It's totally dependent on that rod. Totally to dependent on that rod. So now let's look at two scriptures. Let's look at John first, John chapter 13. Over in John chapter 13, he says in verse 34, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples when you have love one to another. So we could take then and should then take Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and strength. That's correct. Then love your neighbor as yourself. But then now, this commandment I give, that you love one another as I have loved you. So that, that's, part, that's part of that commandment. Yes. Love the Lord thy God, love your neighbor as yourself. But it doesn't stop there. It's, and the word as, the way it's written here in English, that you love one another, semicolon, as I have loved you, that semicolon stands for the word even. Even. Gotcha. So, man, that means, hey, something's happened in us. We've got, we've got the God-given authority and power to love one another even as He loved us. And He loved us when we didn't love Him. We, we, we were running from him and God so loved the world that he gave his son to go after us. Hmm. Now in this, this kind of love is agape love. It's unconditional love. So people need to get acquainted with that. It's not the phileo love, the brotherly love. I'll love you up to a point. I'll love you as far as I'm able to love you. Well, why don't you love me with God's love? Because God's love can love me independent of what I'm doing, how, how I'm act so forth Amen. and so on. Because this is a love that we're going to need to penetrate some of the places he's going to send us. 
See, we're going to need a stronger love than we've got because that love that we've got can love somebody up to a certain point. And you do that again, I'm going to dot your eye, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. But this love is, is a unconditional love that it takes sometimes to penetrate that barrier that's trying to keep us out of the being able to witness effectively to people who are in the world to bring them back into the kingdom. I just, as you mm -hmm. said that, mm -hmm. Jesus was moved with compassion yes, sir. and healed the, the sick. sick. God is love, so compassion is a person. That's exactly right. Moved with a person. Not a feeling. Mm. See, it, is, it comes from commitment to this commandment, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Once I commit to this commandment, I've made a covenant with God. I'm going to love you, and I, I'm going to love you. It don't make no difference what you do. I love you before I met you. I love you after I met you. I love you when you spit on me, and, we, and I, I love you when you bless me with, with an offering. I mean, it, but... <laughs> But the commitment was first. So first. That's what I'm trying to get at. And that commitment has to be first if you're going to do what God told you to do. Because He committed he, first he committed to, love committed me first like to that. us. See, we, we, we. Oh, man. And so now look at John chapter 15, though. And look at John mm. chapter 15. And let's look at verse 25, because this, this is kind of an interesting verse here. He says this But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Now, they hated him without a cause. Now, no, he, he's saying now in John chapter 17, now look at 17, oh, John yeah. 17 and verse 14, he says, now I have given them thy word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. I pray not that you take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. Sanctify them now through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Now, as you've sent me to the world, so have I also sent them into the world. So he's not saying for us to come out of there. He's saying for us to go in there. Now, as we go in there, he is saying that he's going to be the keeper of us. And in we, when we go in that world, We've got to love people and understand that, wait a minute, if I know that you are not the one that can hold back my promotion if God wants to promote me, then what's to keep me from loving you? I mean, why, why, why get mad at you? You just got rid of the fear. Come on. You just got rid of the fear. Oh, I'm telling you. Uh, that's well, what, that's maybe e I, you Exactly. Know, I, uh... Maybe I'll not mention anything about my church or anything because, you know, I might offend them. Well, now, wait a minute. I just offended God. Oh, tell you. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm supposed to be, I'm here for a purpose. Yes, indeed. Now, perfected love will cast out the fear. When you just, you followed that track right there, there was a moment. I, I, I literally sensed it as you said it. There was a moment the fear was gone. This, this, that is liberating, isn't that it? That is absolutely liberating. See, mm. they, they hated him, and they may hate you. It's not what you do. It's just how you are, how you're made, the one you represent, and so forth. This world is, 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 is filled. I mean, there's demonic influences all around this thing. Wow. They may not love you. Wow. You didn't do anything to them. They just don't like you but they can't stop you. And if they can't stop you, what's to keep you from loving them? Well, what's the big deal? They, they're not, the Bible says for us in Proverbs chapter, in Psalm chapter 75, promotion for us does not come from no, the east no. or from no, the west. No, it comes from above. It comes from above. Yes, it does. Now, God is putting you in that world and he's going to increase your influence. Huh? Now, let's say, let's <laughs> say you didn't get promoted. I got you. Okay. Um, <laughs> you, you hadn't had a promotion. Everybody got promoted over you. Everybody got promoted over you. Your quality of life is not based on that promotion because you're seeking first the kingdom there of God. You don't you need their go. money. 
Brother Copeland, you mean I can have as big a house as a supervisor? You make the supervisor so jealous, he, he, may, he may fire you to get you out of his sight. That's what happened. They're back here. <laughs> yeah, that's, Isaac uh, sowed that he sure famine. did. Well, what was, what was going on in that, Bill? God sent him in there. Yes, he did. Told him to now, right he there. sowed in famine and reaped a hundredfold. He dug wells that, uh, and got water. He sure did. Now, what, ha what was happening here, God was breaking that famine. Absolutely. With him. With him. Mm -hmm. Now, they thought the famine was over because the wells are flowing, the tre trees are blooming and all that Until again. Until he left, huh? And they got so <laughs> mad at him yeah. because his estate got bigger than the king. That is exactly the right. The king wasn't giving him anything. The Bible says they wanted him out of the country. They ran him off. And the fruit trees died and the wells dried up. But now that is a picture of the believer going into the world. Oh, man. The, we've got, <laughs> folks, we got to get this. That his love for me is a, 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 it's stunning. It's astounding. Uh, but his love for you is the same as it is for me. And I got to come to you. <laughs> uh, and hey. Yes, sir. Uh, you love me when you know me. Uh, <laughs> you may right. start out hating me. That's exactly but right. But I got to keep loving you to get you through you, that. Man. Ain't nothing you can do to hurt me. You kill me, you get me you out of this mess. <laughs> so, so I... I have no fear of death because I know he loves exactly. me. Ah, get on with it. I'm here. telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling oh. you. This is powerful. See, people trying to do things in faith without love. You, you're not supposed you to do can't. that. These, these run together. And, and so, now let's look at Matthew chapter 13 again. Mm. <laughs> hang it, on, hang on a minute. I Lord God, praise thank you. <laughs> 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 Oh, yes. thank you. Praise you. Now, you know, what you said. God told me, He said, I want you to teach on the power of love. I'm thinking there's not much in there, a couple of sermons. You know what I mean? I've been on this thing for almost 30 lessons. Well, um, yeah. the, you, you know what I'm saying? I've, what, what I'm saying is, it, it's more down under there. I'm going to just have to get off. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm going to ask the Lord about it. But, but it, uh, now, well, now, watch this. This is uh, Matthew's Gospel and chapter 13. Now, look at the analogy of this as we were talking about just now. Verse 31, another parable put he forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it's the greatest among herbs and becometh a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Now, let's see this. He's talking here about a believer being planted into the world. True enough, we're talking about a seed. Well, we are the seed yeah, that's of Abraham. Yeah. Glory to that's God. And God is planting us like his seed. And he plants us deliberately among the ungodly. This is deliberate. This is not by accident. He took Joseph and delivered him from his brothers to Egypt. Why? Because there was an anointing there that would trigger the blessing inside of him. Oh, this, uh, you follow what I'm saying? To bring forth the most powerful economy in the world. So here he was, and he is saying, now, you're going to be the least of all seeds. In other words, when you first get there, you're going to be obscure. Nobody knew me when I got to Chicago. Nobody in that ministry, nobody cared, and you know, so forth. I had the first storefront church down the roughest area in Chicago, in Lake Pulaski, and start, nobody cared. But today, <laughs> <laughs> I'm being invited at the table of everything seemingly that's significant that go on. Today, our shopping malls gave four to 500 jobs, employed people. So today, now I'm just saying, if you go in there like he tells you and stay in love, then that faith will work and raise you up that when your beginning was small, your latter end shall greatly increase. So in here, you will become the greatest influence in that world. And that's what God is looking that's for. That's the reason he put you in there? That's the reason he put you in there. I'm quoting you. 
<laughs> I heard you say in a Sunday morning message you preached mm. there at your mm. place. Mm. You said, teaching on this, on this same thing. Yeah. 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 You said, if I can just get one of you, mm. if I can just get one member of this church to come on up here with me and get up on top of this mountain that we're, we're, where we're supposed to be here, which is what you were just talking Absolutely. about. Absolutely. You, you're, you're an insignificant seed when you get put in there, but, but it begins to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow until you get up on top of that mountain Shift there where the reason why God called you in that place to start with. You, you said, if I can get just, just one, one, it's going to affect thousands, maybe millions of people. Yeah. Millions of people will be affected by one person who's on the mountain top. 112th Psalm, right? Praise quick, right quick, right quick, God, right man. <laughs> 112th Psalm, right? Quick, right quick. Now, here is a man. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed, the blessing of the Lord, yes. it maketh rich, and yeah. he adds no sorrow to yeah. it. Proverbs yeah. 10 22. Yeah. Blessed is the man that feareth or, or has high honor yes. and ex extreme uh, reverence to God that delights greatly in his commandments, his seed shall be mighty upon earth. That's Look at it, this. Isn't it? This is what I said. Mm -hmm. The generation of the upright shall, shall be blessed. blessed. This man blessed a whole generation. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Here's a man that said, God, tell me something to do. I delight in following your, through on your, your commands, command. because when I do, boom, the blessing of the Lord mm. explodes mm. around me, mm. Mm. and it goes to affecting everybody. Everybody. Else. Now, now, here's a man that he had a house, and is full of wealth and riches, and his righteousness is intact. intact. Mm. So mm. he's not the world wealthy. He is the God-blessed wealthy. wealthy. And the thing that got him there was, command me. Yes. Give me another commandment. Tell me somewhere to go. You got some nasty place that needs to be blessed? Send me there. Send me the over there. The worst place over there. Tell I'm me to do something you. this so big I can't possibly do it. Ugh. Isn't it? Because I can't, I can't be blessed until, until I got something from you. I got, I got to have a commandment. I, I, I got to have, I got to be commanded here. I, I, I sir, I, I'm, I'm nothing I'm, until you I'm tell me. I'm looking for something. Give me something. Yes, sir. You. I'm here, sir. Wow. I'm yours to command. Now, come on, that's, come on. I ain't nothing to you. Tell me to do something. It, this is it, isn't it? Because love has got to get in that place, and I'm a carrier. <laughs> I'm infected with it. I'll go pass this around. But this is what you said in John chapter 14. Over in John chapter 14, this is just what you're talking about right here, verse 21. Yes, it he is. He that has my commandments, am I right about that? Yes, sir. And keepeth them, it's he that loveth me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and I'll manifest myself to him. He didn't say nothing about crying all night long. He, di he didn't say about shouting, well, I love God. <laughs> well, do you? Yeah, I love God. Well, why didn't you do what he, he said? said? Well, I couldn't. My wife wouldn't let me. <laughs> no, you love your wife more than you do God. <laughs> there ain't no way I love her. No, no. But in, in relationship to this, you did, because you put something That's else in. That's exactly when right. You, man, when you get a revelation of the fact that my he loves goodness. me, and they can't hurt me if they kill me. My goodness, this is powerful. I'm telling the you. The fear is gone. Is the fear is gone, and you got to get rid of that fear. Oh, no, yeah. No. The fear, fear is the only reason you had not got it now. He that mm, fears is not made perfect, perfect in love. love. Now, we know what first yes, John That's what he says. That, now, now let's, let's look at that. Can we look at that just for... Tim, how much time we got left here? Oh, oh don't yeah. look at that. Okay. <laughs> let's go over there. Well, just read the scripture, and then we'll, we'll come back to it at the next session. He says, uh, 
tomorrow. He says uh, that down at 1 John chapter 4 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. he says, and we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect that we may be have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Now, if you got any fear in your life and this fear is bothering you, just stand up right now and, and say, Lord, I've, I've found a problem here. Mm -hmm. I'm not practicing the love of God. It's when we love one another, you go back up a couple of verses there. When we love one another, love's perfected yep. in yep. I'm, I'm practice makes perfect. I need to be loving. I need to be doing this all the time, every day, day in, day out, all the time. It grows and gets bigger. The bigger the love, the bigger the oh faith. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Things are happening right now. Yes, sir. I can feel people it. are getting healed right in, now. I can sense it in the spirit. People just, just, just people that just realize, glory to God. I, I, I need to be forgiving. I need to be practicing this. Right, the, the, right there. And the moment you make that decision, sickness just says, "Well, I can't stay here anymore. I'm gone." Go. Because the Master, love Himself, the Healer Himself, is in the house. <laughs> glory to God. Just sit there and get healed a little bit, and Bill and I'll be right back. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.